we're in Inverness. In fact, we've just overnighted in the, what's it called? The Royal Highland Hotel in Inverness. At least said soon as mended. Anyway, we're gonna have a great day today. We're gonna have a mystical, magical, pagan day out in Scotland, starting here in Inverness and going round. We're gonna take you to three places that will be really cool and really interesting and mystical. Let's go. So I've brought you to the Clava Cairns. It's just by, it's about a mile, a mile and a half from Culloden, just outside Inverness, right? And this is an incredible place to start our mystical day in the Highlands of Scotland, okay? Here you have the Clava Cairns. You've got one, you've got two, and then in the distance you've got a third cairn, okay? Now, let me tell you a little bit about these cairns. So each of the cairns, as you can see, all right, here and the outside, you've got large stones all the way around the outside, okay? And then you have smaller, uh, rounded, eroded stones sitting that I assume came from a riverbed uh, because of their shape on top of them. Also, come, come, come with me. You can see uh, that you can go into and there's a circular bit inside uh, that cairn. There would have been uh, a roof on it at one point, okay? Now, the middle cairn over here, uh, there's no route into that, but there is a similar route into that, uh, the far cairn there, okay? Now, the, the doorway, the entryway, it points so the sun shines right in in the winter solstice. Isn't that an incredible thing? Not only that, right now they all look grey, but at the time archaeologists have found that they were originally painted so that when the sun shone in in the winter solstice, down this line, it would have been bright colours, right? It would have shone, it would have been an incredible thing as part of whatever mystical ceremony was going on at the time. We also know from archaeology that this whole area previously was uh, occupied, right? It was like a little village kind of thing. And another thing, when you look here, the, there's 12 stones round about, standing stones round about, and it starts from the tallest, again facing towards the winter solstice, and as you go round, the standing stones get smaller as you travel round to the other side. It's an incredible fe Now, here's the thing. At some point in prehistory, people have been motivated enough, because this one guy didn't do this, right? This is a community who've come together to make this happen, okay? And I'm just trying to imagine this guy that, that thought about this in the first place, okay? Uh, Tam, and he goes to his mate and goes, Willie, I've got an idea. What's that, Tam? What we're going to do is we're going to get a bunch of stones and we're going to put them in a circle, but they'll be big. They'll be big stones, right? It'll take more than a man to carry it. Oh, that's a big effort, Tam, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? Aye, it's more than that, Willie. Because then what we're going to have to do, once we've brought them all here, right, like the, the pharaohs are doing in Egypt right now to build those big pyramids. You've heard, you've seen the pyramids on, on the telly, didn't you, Willie? Oh, I saw that, Tam, right enough. I think it was Twitter I saw it. Disney matter, right? We're going to bring these stones and we're going to bring them here. Tam, that's a lot of effort. It's more than that, Willie, right? Because what we're going to do is then we're going to get lots of little stones. Where are we going to get them, Tam? We'll get them for your riverbeds and stuff like that. And we're going to put the we're going to put them up uh, round about. The stones that are round, we're going to fill them in with all these little stones. Oh, that's a lot of effort, Tam. It's more than that, Willie, because what we're going to do is we're going to leave an entranceway so that people can walk in. We might bury some folk in there or something like that. Oh, Tam, that sounds like an awful lot of effort. It's more than that, Willie, because what we're going to do is we're going to arrange that that entranceway fits perfectly to the direction of the rising sun at the winter solstice. 
What are souls this time? I don't even know what that is. Ask the druid, Willie. He'll tell you. Oh, that's a lot of effort, Tom. It's going to be more than that, Willie, right? Because what we're going to do is we're going to cover the whole thing up. Oh, Tom, really? It's, a, it's more than that, Willie. Because what we're also going to do is we're going to get these huge, big standing stones. Where are we going to get them, Tom? We'll quarry them, Willie. Didn't you worry? We're going to get these huge, big standing stones. You know, like the other ones. Oh, I can what you're on, Tom. And we're going to put them in a circle round about this big cairn that we're going to make. Oh, is that what we're calling it, Tam? A cairn? Aye, it's going to be a cairn. And we're going to put it all round. That's a lot of effort, Tam. It's more than that, Willie, because we're going to arrange them so the biggest one faces the winter solstice as well and they get smaller as they go round. Oh, Tam, that's a lot of effort. It's more than that, Willie. We're going to make three of them. Tom, you cannot be serious. That's more effort than I can imagine. It's more than that, Willie. We're going to destroy the village to put them there. Right? So I'm, I'm just saying, this is what essentially has happened. And the, the level of motivation of, let's remember, a prehistoric group to, to come together as a community to make this happen must have been incredible and uh, around a th these have been here for about 5,000 years right uh, but around a thousand years later over uh, adjacent to this middle cairn someone has tried again to start and build something I don't know what it was and I'm just it strikes me that a thousand years later the peak of whatever a belief system created this has died off and at some point Tam's descendant has said to his pal I'll tell you what Willie I've got an idea what we're going to do you see where those big cairns are aye I can Tam what we're going to do is we're going to recreate <laughs> and uh, but this is a wonderfully eerie kind of eerie spiritual kind of place uh, to come to take you on a mystical day in Scotland but we've got other things uh, to see and do today as well uh, so let's go into them and now we've come over the Keswick Bridge to the Black Isle and this certainly mystical it might appear strange let me explain the background for those of you that don't know uh, this is a special, special place, right? And of course, in pagan Scottish uh, folklore and history, water is so important, right? So let me explain why all these things, uh, all these bits of cloth are hanging up around about in all these trees. In fact, look, look at this all the way around, okay? Uh, here, over in the Black Hill, because this well, a special significance, yeah? And <clears throat> it's called the clutey well. Uh, Scots, old Scots word for a cloth is a clute, yeah? In fact, a clutey dumpling is a, 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 a dumpling that you would wrap in a cloth and tie up. And, because trust me, some of the people aren't Scottish that watch this, okay? <laughs> right? A clute, a cloth, a vest, something like that. So here's the thing. Uh, this, what, this well, this clutey well, has magical properties. And if you take something, if you have an ache or a pain or something uh, that ails you, if you take a cloth and you dip it in the water and you rub it on the part that ails you and you hang it to the tree, then gradually as the water evaporates and the cloth decomposes naturally, then your ache or pain will disappear. Now here's the thing, right? Some people have come and you can see some of the bits of cloth, they're, they're man-made fibers, they're not organic, they're going to be there forever. These people are walking about the world with their continuing pain, wondering how is it that this pain hasn't gone away? You used nylon, you mental nutcase, right? So, but somebody's even up here, somebody's put a shoe, here, oh, 
there's a baby shoe here, okay? There's a polyester tie here. What are you thinking about? So, it so happens, I've got lots of aches and pains. I should have brought shorts so I could wear uh, for my arthritic knee. However, I do have a tennis elbow. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this uh, <coughs> cotton handkerchief. I'm going to dip it in the water of the clutey well. And I'm going to rub it. Oh, I I do believe I can feel the pain easing already, in actual fact. I'm going to rub it on my arm, on my elbow, and I'm going to tie the handkerchief. To the tree. And now, as time goes on, my tennis elbow is going to disappear. Isn't that a wonderful way to look after the NHS in these times of coronavirus. We've got one more mystical thing to show you again on the Black Isle. So let's go and see it. So, now I'll be honest, the weather's coming in like I needed to tell you that, okay? Uh, but clearly, it's a bit choppy here, but the, we're still, we're in the very end of the Black Isle at Channery Point. Uh, there's a lighthouse here. Uh, on the right kind of conditions, you can see dolphins playing here uh, <coughs> in the Murray Firth. But that's not what I brought you here for. It's our mystical, magical day out in Scotland from Inverness. And uh, the reason I brought you here was to tell you about the Brand Seer. Now, the Brand Seer, uh, was uh, somebody who had the second sight, one of the most famous guys who had the second sight. There, I'm told that as a child, his mother was going through a graveyard and uh, as she did so, she met a ghost from a Danish princess who was on her way back to her grave at the night and she needed to get past. And the mother of this guy, uh, Kenneth, Kenneth uh, Mackenzie was his name and his mum said to the ghost that she would only let her pass if she would grant her son the second sight and so she said she would do that she let the ghost pass later on uh, young Kenneth found a little stone with a hole through it and whenever he looked through that stone he could see the future he predicted Culloden, he predicted the Caledonian Canal, he predicted, he said that there would be a Scottish Parliament again, but not before a man could walk from England to France. Now some people might say, ah, that suggests that he said there would never be, because uh, it's not possible to walk on dry ground from England to France, but they built the Channel Tunnel and we got a Parliament. Anyway, loads of predictions. There was one prediction he maybe could have made better. You see, he lived in a Seaforth estate and the Earl of Seaforth had headed off to France and his wife, reputedly the ugliest woman in the kingdom, that's maybe unfair, wanted to know that her husband was safe and she came to the brown seer and asked, is my husband safe, how is he, what is he doing, blah, 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 blah. Uh, Kanyakur, the brand seer, would simply say that he was safe. But uh, the countess uh, of C4, she, she would, no, I want, I want to know more. What's he doing? What is, blah, 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 blah. You're supposed to have the second sight. Kanyakur wasn't happy to give that information until she threatened to have him killed. And it was at that point he revealed that her husband was safe, but with another woman. Ah, oh, she's in the arms of another woman. And the Countess of Seaforth was so angry that she had him brought down here and burned in a barrel of tar. And this monument here commemorates the Brand Seer who was uh, burnt to death here. If only he could have predicted that and avoided the Countess of Seaforth. Anyway, there you go. That's our day of mystical things on a day out from Inverness. And we have 
mystical weather to go with it. I mean, Dawkins can be a lot of my life. Cheerio and